Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this video series uh, with Shitish. He is uh, currently working as a postdoc in NTNU University in Norway. So I met him few times uh, in different conferences because our field of work is a bit similar. So we attend the similar conferences. So I met him again and again. And that's why I thought like why not uh, share his experience of coming from India after doing masters and doing a PhD in Switzerland, EPFL Switzerland, and then moving to Norway to do a postdoc. Uh, so currently he's residing there and I'll start, I will give the uh, platform off to Shitish. So where are you from and uh, can you give a brief background of your study in India, Shitish? Thank you yeah, for so, joining. Thank you, thank you for having me today. And um, so I come from um, Allahabad in, in Uttar Pradesh. Uh, it's a very small town on Indian scale, actually. Well, Indians will know that how, how small are um, uh, small towns, right? So um, as I come from Allahabad, I did my bachelor's there and I did my master's there uh, from um, uh, IIIT Allahabad. Um, and then I then I moved to Switzerland, yeah, after my master's, yeah. I, I, my whole schooling is from Allahabad. So it's like I was living with my parents until I was uh doing my masters and then i left uh india so all my friends were like hey you did not leave your parents house and then you left directly for for abroad uh, okay uh, yeah. and your masters was in it right my masters was yeah like triple it is this um like indian institute of information technology so of course it's uh, uh, okay, okay it but uh there was this specialization on intelligent systems so it's like uh, applied machine learning and artificial intelligence, yeah. Okay. And when, which year did you finish your master's? Uh, 2011. Okay. Uh, okay. And immediately... Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I can see from a LinkedIn profile that you immediately apply, you got a PhD in Switzerland. So why did you choose to do PhD in Switzerland and uh, when did you finish your PhD? Oh, so I... So there, there was a kind of um, backward elimination process because I did not want to go to US because you have to pay there. And uh, I did not want to go to UK because it doesn't uh, guarantee, um, you know, um, not all the PhDs who start in UK go out with a PhD. You also can get this MPhil. So it, it doesn't uh guarantee that you start a phd and you will end with a degree of like you, you will not end with a doctorate um so my main target was uh either germany or switzerland um because it, you know like the universities they speak english like they, the official working language of tus is still english so yeah i started applying around i also applied to amsterdam like uh, to to netherlands as well Okay, I was about to ask like why you did not look for any university in Netherlands. Yeah, yeah, because my my, my uh, plan was to stay in you know uh, mostly where people do speak a bit of English, not necessarily you know like uh, then I would have moved to US or UK, but yeah, but where okay. the official languages are still English in in universities, yeah. Okay, and how long was your PhD? Like when did you finish? So I finished in November 2015 and I started in September 2011. So around four, four and a half years. Yeah. Okay. And ideally the duration of PhD in Switzerland is. Oh, how much? It's, it depends from university to because Switzerland for a small country has too many universities. Like it has two big universities in EPFL and ETH, which are federal. And then uh, there are four or five cantonal universities, like one is in Lausanne, which is like across the street from EPFL. Um, there is one in Zurich, one in Basel, one in Bern, and one in Lugano. So yeah, they, like for a, for a small country like Switzerland, they have too many universities there. Uh, so it really depends on which university and which department of that university you are in. Because uh, even like I don't know in detail about other universities. I know because I worked at EPFL and University of Lausanne, so I know for those two uh, that it can vary from 2.5 years for electrical engineering in 
uh, in in EPFL to around six or seven years in uh, social science in in University of Lausanne. So it's it it depends where you are. Like I know people who have finished their PhDs in two point five years in in Department of Electrical Engineering at EPFL. Okay, But so your at, is, no yeah. no go ahead sorry. No, no, it's fine. You can continue. Yeah. So the uh, at compu in, at the Department of Computer Science, the average is like five five point five years. Yeah. Okay. I mean, uh, when I was doing masters, I worked with a PhD student uh, who was doing PhD in Lugano, Switzerland. Yeah, yeah. University of Lugano, and I asked him. So his experience was like in their university. It was it varied between four to six years. That's what he. He mentioned like uh, yeah yeah yeah. EPFL has uh, a upper limit of six years. Okay. So it will not go beyond six years. Mm -hmm. But um, like I said, computer science has five point five years. Physics has average four years. Maths has average four years. So like your first contract that you sign with EPFL as a PhD student is a four year contract, uh, renewable every year. So, like, for a non-European citizen, basically, okay. and um, then you have to ask for extension, and your supervisor has to write those, you know, small letters that why this person needs uh, the extension and so on. Yeah. Okay. So, how did you? Yeah, you already mentioned. So, how did you apply? Like, uh, was it like just based on your research interest, like uh, intelligent uh, systems that you mentioned? You are working in masters. Was it based on that, or did you attend any conference and you met some professors and you uh, decided, like, okay, I have this cluster of universities in mind and I might uh, apply that, or it was just the elimination that you mentioned and nothing else? No, it, it um, well, um, it has been a long time. But uh, the the idea is, idea was that I wanted uh, because my master's was in applied machine learning, and the applied part was EEG signals. So I was working on EEG signal classification for two years, for one and a half years, let's say. And um, so I I was applying to computer science and neuroscience departments and. Uh, when I was applying for neuroscience departments, I was applying for computational neuroscience departments because you know my background is in engineering, so I will not, I would have never gone to you know the the medical part of neuroscience for sure. Um, but um, so the idea was to um, see. Um, so I did not attend any conferences. Uh, I I was I hardly published during my masters, honestly, and um, so I was uh, I knew that. EPFL, for example, had a memorandum of understanding with Triple IT Allahabad. So there were a lots of bachelor students were going for their semester for their bachelor projects to EPFL already. So that's how I I came to know about EPFL and ETH. And then I did a little bit of more search. Like uh, there was this kind of culture at Triple uh, IT um, Allahabad that uh, the the students were going abroad for PhDs. So we knew from our alumni that uh, like for example the first day I knew that. Hey, there is Imperial College in uh, London. There is uh, ETH. There is EPFL. Uh, there is TU Delft. Um, there is uh, TU Munich. There is Tubingen. So uh, I knew, like, from the day one, that oh, there are certain universities where our alumni is. So, um, so that's how I knew. Like, it was more a student network kind of thing. That so okay. that was the first level of applications that I sent in. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. As you mentioned, like it was a long, long time back that you applied, like nine years back. But uh, do you remember anything specific? I mean, obviously, in the website they mention the application requirements for a PhD to apply for a PhD. But do you remember anything specific that you need to have, like maybe like certain grades in your masters or something which you need the most for applying for a PhD in Switzerland? For Switzerland, there is no requirement of grades. Like there is no lower limit of grades for applying. It's basically, um, I think, all that matters is your recommendation. But um, but there is a lower limit of your TOEFL score or any kind of English testing score. So either TOEFL or uh, IELTS, you have to have 
um, I think that the cutoff was 105. So for uh, Switzerland, the cutoff is much higher than Germany. Like for Germany, you have only 92. It ranges between 92 and 98 uh, for TOEFL. I don't know for what what's the corresponding for uh, eyelids is, but I think it's between 6.5 and 7.5. Uh, okay. For for eyelids, I I think, but I might not. I might be wrong here. But I'm sure about uh, I uh, TOEFL that it's between 92 and 98 for Germany. But uh, EPFL has this 105 and above. Okay. And uh, do you remember anything specific that you faced during your PhD interview at that time? No, the interview went very smoothly. Like it was the first time when, uh, you know, like as an Indian kid, you are more, you know, uh, um, used to being grilled in interviews. But it was my first experience when I was not grilled at interviews. I was mostly like, it was more of a conversation that, um my my supervisor so i got my like i got one interview uh, i got in my in sorry i got into epfl with my first interview so that was uh, a, a good luck but uh, he was asking me um, about why do i want to come to switzerland i made a joke about bollywood you know and uh, it was he, he was laughing about it because apparently he didn't know that it was he knew that there were you know, Bollywood shootings in in uh, in Switzerland, but uh, he didn't know that it was this big. And so, so I said, you know, I have only watched uh, Switzerland in in Bollywood movies. I want to watch it firsthand. And and he he liked that kind of uh, like answer. And then uh, he was also like, um, he was looking for um, applied machine learning person because my project was something uh, like that. The match between your uh, profile and the professor that you apply is of utmost importance. Because uh, there is, um, when you start filling application, I, I hope it's still the same. Because I know for at least for two, three years ago, I know that the, the process was the same. Uh, became more rigorous, but the, but it was same. Um, technically the same process. And so you have to choose uh, between, uh, so you never apply to a professor at EPFL. You always apply to uh, department. So you apply to Department of Computer Science and there are like, X number of uh, applications there, and then uh, they are filtered and sent to. So you have to say so, and and sent to different professors, of course. Um, so you have to say that I'm applying to Department of Computer Science, but I'm interested in, or I have more overlap in uh, my experience and um, expectations of this professor. And you have to choose up to I think five professors. And then your application is sent to those professors. And if they have um, interest in your profile or money to pay you, they, they take you. Okay. That was very detailed, I guess. Everyone will understand what actually they ex they can expect. Yeah, so, I like that. I like that. This is something I like about EPFL uh, still, that, that the, they, they create a kind of pool of PhD students and, and uh, professors like pick from there. So that's very nice. That's very nice for four professors. 